as a general rule, we're talking about studying the Torah. As a general rule, the way we study is you read the text of the Torah and you come away with a certain impression. Your, your first impression. Sit, sit for a moment and ask yourself, what else? There's got to be more to the story. My first impression is always insufficient because the first impression is mine, human. Did I really hear what the Torah is saying? That's, that's an important question because there's always more. So the first thought, the first impression, your first sympathy in a story or in a law of Torah is usually only the tip of the iceberg. And that's why there are so many commentaries and there is so much conversation and discussion. It's endless. So our first impression is always insufficient. It's just the surface. For example, the notorious story of David and Bathsheba. King David was one of the holiest men that ever lived. To dismiss King David, David HaMelech, as a person who committed adultery and sent the husband off to die, <laughs> not quite the hero we would like to think of him as. That would not that would not be acceptable at all. In fact, if God forbid he was guilty of either adultery or killing the husband, we wouldn't read his psalms. We wouldn't quote him. We wouldn't sing David, Melech Israel, Chai, Chai, Rick. <laughs> we wouldn't celebrate him at all. We would try to erase him from our memory. We don't venerate people who commit adultery. We have no respect for them. The average decent person doesn't commit adultery. So there's got to be more to the story than that. So let's back up a little bit and see what really is going on on a divine, heavenly level. In order for there to be freedom of choice, until Mashiach comes, we have to be able to choose evil over good. We have to be able to choose false over true. We have to be able to choose darkness over light and bitterness over sweetness. Why would anyone in their right mind do that? Why would anyone choose the wrong when he can do the right? Why would he choose bad when he can be good? Why? It's because what's good about the good, what is holy about the holy, is concealed. The most dramatic form of that concealment God is creating the world at every moment. If God had created the world in the six days of creation and then quit, and the world is now floating along on its own, it wouldn't be so surprising that we could ignore God and forget about him, deny his existence, because we have no contact with him. He created the world a long time ago, and it's over. His involvement in the world is over. So it's easy to forget. But the truth is that he is creating the world as we speak. Every second, he is recreating the world out of absolute nothingness. So he's very much involved. So at the very moment that he is giving me life, making me exist, I can ignore him. How is that? Well, that's, that's the, the reason 
that we describe this world as the lowest of all worlds, the lowest in, the ter in terms of God's concealment. God is so concealed that even though he is creating us at every moment and he doesn't want us to murder or to commit adultery, we can do it anyway. Not, not out of spite. There are those, you know, there are those geniuses who can do that too. But most people, it's not out of spite. We don't even know who we're spiting. So holiness, godliness is concealed so that we may have freedom of choice. Why that's a good idea? <laughs> that's a different topic. But the fact is, God is very much present, and yet we don't see it. See, the same is true with godly people. In the olden days, there were godly people, but not everybody recognized their godliness. We have all these instances of um, the heroes, the prophets, not recognized, not appreciated, because when godliness is concealed, it's not just God himself, but everyone and everything godly is concealed. So you can see the holiest person in the world walk down the street and you have no idea he's holy. You can read the holiest book in the world and you have no idea it's holy. So here's what happens. This concealment, which is absolutely crucial to the existence of the universe and for God's vast eternal plan, because without our freedom of choice, the whole plan fails. This is particularly pronounced when it comes to the development and the process of the coming of Mashiach. We've believed in Mashiach forever. We talk about it, we sing about it. We end every conversation with the wish and the prayer for Mashiach to come. We mention it in the daily prayers. And yet, do we see anything? I mean, until, until today. <laughs> now we're starting to see something, but all the years, the terrible years, was there any any sign, any visual sign of Mashiach? None at all. In fact, every major step towards the birth, the development, and the revelation of Mashiach is doubly concealed. Because if we could see that, it would certainly interfere with our freedom of choice. Now let's take a look at the story of David HaMelech and Bathsheba. David HaMelech is the grandfather of Mashiach. Mashiach has to be a descendant of King David from the tribe of Yehuda. He has to come through one of the sons of King David, and that is King Solomon. How was King Solomon born? To Bathsheba. So, let's take a look at the story. King David looks out the window and he sees a woman on the balcony, and he falls madly in love with her. Her husband is a soldier in his army. He sends the soldier off to the front lines, hoping that he would get killed, or so it seems. And then he marries Bacheva. Bacheva was not a woman, she was a young girl. But in those days, girls got married very young. It's also true that every soldier that went off to war under King David divorced his wife because if he should be lost at war or taken prisoner for the rest of his life, his wife, who was still married to him, would be a, a living widow. So to avoid that happening, every soldier gave his wife a divorce. So Bacheva was already divorced 
when King David saw her. Another little unknown fact is that her husband had committed treason. David could have him executed on the grounds of treason, but he knew that that would be misinterpreted. And so he simply sent him back to war. So technically speaking, no, it was not adultery, and no, he did not kill the husband in order to be able to have the wife. That's just legally, technically, the reality of the situation. But King David cried for the rest of his life, asking forgiveness for this. Forgiveness for what? For the way things looked. Because this was going to be the grandfather and grandmother of Moshiach, it was concealed behind the ugliest possible concealment. So no one should notice that there is something holy going on. But on a mystical level, the reason that, the, that this event needed such an ugly concealment is because every step in the development of Moshiach has to be buried behind a lot of distraction, a lot of confusion, so that the godliness of what is happening should be unnoticed. And that's why as you read the story, sounds terrible. Really sounds terrible. But you have to stop and think. What is God telling us? That some guy committed adultery, so what? Why do we need to know that? And once we know that, why are we still interested in this guy? So you can see how dangerous it is to be content with surface impressions. What would it mean that Jews and Christians and Muslims all venerate King David if he committed adultery? He's, not, he's no better than the average person. And he had the husband killed? We should never mention his name. And if we do venerate him because of his great poetry, that itself is so immoral. To respect a person who has no morals? Why? Because he's talented? That's, that's not kosher. That's bad news for us. So, it turns out, anyone who has, gets the impression that King David sinned, not correct even technically. Spiritually, it's that concealment. It's really interesting that Almost every individual in the, in the Torah has something that doesn't look right. Doesn't look right. And we have to explain what really happened. But as you go down in history, as you get closer to our times, the holy people don't need justification or explanation or even commentary. Like, for example, Hillel, the sage Hillel, who actually coined the expression, what is hateful to you, do not do to others. Nothing in his life needs to be explained. Rabbi Akiva, who said, loving your fellow Jew is the cardinal principle in Torah. We know a lot about his life. Nothing needs to be explained. He had 24,000 students. More recently, the Baal Shem Tov. In fact, speaking of the Baal Shem Tov, he was probably unique in that he did not hesitate to perform miracles. 
blatant, absolute violation of the laws of nature, absolute supernatural miracles. The more the better. In earlier years, the, the, holy, the holy people who could perform miracles were hesitant. It was disturbing. It might inspire people, it might confuse people. If you're so holy and you can perform miracles, why don't you fix the world? Why don't you cure everybody? Why don't you make all the hurt go away? So we see that as we get closer to Moshiach, we don't need to hide it as much. As much. <laughs> it's still quite hidden. And the coming of Mashiach will still be a surprise. But we're getting closer. We can start revealing it slowly, gradually, until it dawns on everybody that Moshiach is actually here and we didn't notice him coming. So that's the story of David HaMelech and Batsheva, two of the holiest peoples in history. Shalom Aleichem. How are you? You know, I do a lot of talking, a lot of Zooming, many classes, many subjects, but that's all formal stuff. Hopefully good stuff, but formal. We also have a Wednesday night meeting that's more informal and kind of um, Hamish. If you want to join us for that kind of an event, um, interactive, time for questions and so on, if you want to join us for this side of conversation, click on the link below and join us every Wednesday night at nine o'clock. Well, maybe not every Wednesday night, but we try to make it every Wednesday night at nine o'clock a more informal chat, which uh, can be more enjoyable at times than the formal stuff. So check it out. Click on the link and join us. Try it. You'll like it. <laughs>